instead of coming out of genuine significance, which is what? Who I am is more important than what I do. And what I do may never be seen in earth in the light, like Rick said, of what it really was in heaven. The significance of my contribution may not be known on a bookseller list, but it'll be known by hell and it'll be known in eternity because I was faithful to do what the Father told me. Without walking around Olympus of low self-esteem. That's the power of feedback. If the church comes to another level of maturity regarding prophetic dialogue, we can start to really talk to each other in ways that completes the process rather than just running around in predictive prophetic circles. Does that make sense? But what about the negatives? Give me a red pen. Something negative. The negatives. You know what the negatives are? The negatives is the feedback you need because it has to do with behavior that's getting in the way of you manifesting what you're capable of manifesting. Unless you have trusted relationships around you that you invite into that dialogue, you will never have the conversation you need to have to unlock the potential of what you really carry. So here's, here's an important thought. God is in the business this year of training you in how to take your mountain. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, owning you is a big deal with God. Not letting the enemy, the culture, the pressures, the circumstances, CNN, or other things take territory in your head and in your heart that doesn't belong there. Possess your soul. Own it. Don't surrender your state to any external force. And don't excuse, justify, or defend failure, weakness, or inadequacy on the basis of some external power. Because there's nothing outside of you that has the power to dictate your internal condition. If you don't believe that, then you haven't, you haven't passed Take My Mountain 101, which is you have to have total responsibility for owning your territory. Because if you can own the territories on the inside of you, God will put you in territory you can take over on the outside. And it doesn't matter whether it's liberals or this or that that are in that territory. There's a great verse in the Bible. And it says this, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The manifestation of rulership isn't the, isn't the elimination of enemies, it's the authority to dominate them while you're in the middle of them. Rule in the midst. That requires a level of spiritual authority the church doesn't operate in. And it isn't because of greater organizational capacity, even though it's necessary. It's because of greater occupational capacity, being more full of the Holy Spirit. How's that gonna happen? God is building together relationships in your life. This is critical. The church is going through a great facelift right now. Some people that I have great respect for haven't found their tribe and home necessarily in a formal identity with the church in their local community, but they're still pursuing and hungry for God. Here's what's important for you to know. God is building relationships together by the Spirit. You have to identify the people around you that He is inviting you to be authentic with so that together you can create a habitation of the Holy Spirit. You guys want to really be on the cutting edge? Think about this. Even in a church that you go to, that does not, that doesn't make a substitute for having the habitation of the Holy Spirit that you're dwelling in. You need to have a handful of relationships that for you are living stones built together around you that constitute the body of Christ you're connected to, where you have permission to speak to your undeveloped potential, permission to talk about the areas that are getting in the way of your potential, where you can be open about what's going on and hold nothing back. That's how you access your unleashed prophetic potential. That's how you become the person you dream about, prophesy about, and hope to see show up in some move of God that you're waiting to happen. Truth is, as far as I'm concerned, the focus on a move of God is the wrong focus. I think from heaven's perspective, God is waiting for a move of men. He's waiting for a move of people. Because if you've already prepared a banqueting table, the provision is set. The only thing that remains is come and eat. So there's evidently a whole lot of provision the church has to grow up to, to, grow up to take hold of in order to occupy territory God's already given us.